Hey, welcome back to The Hand Toolery. I'm Andrew Malacy. Today we are still on the sideboard, no surprise. But as you can see, I've got three doors done and I've only got this one door left. And I've experimented a little bit with how I actually do the doors. I've done these two the exact same way. This one's slightly different. And while this one was easier at the beginning, because I just made a groove and then I had to cut away the groove whenever I glued it up. This one actually turned out to be a nice result even though it's a little bit more, uh, these two here, what I do is I cut a rabbit instead of a groove and then I have to do a little bit more measuring and precision. And so there's a lot more potential for error in this one to make big gaps, whereas on the back at least, whereas on this one, the potential to really mess up the actual inside groove that results or the rabbit that results after everything's done is uh, greater. So my rabbit on that one's not as nice. These ones are nice and clean, but I did have some gaps here. Anyways, to start, I've got my two door styles fitted exactly to the opening. They just sit in place. As you can see, they're very, just, it's, it's slightly press, uh, it's a little bit of a friction fit. Here are my two rails for the doors, and they're oversized, of course. And what I've done is I've marked in, you've got a, on this type of frame and panel construction, your front face here is going to have to go and be seamless with the two styles. So the most important measurement and the most important face is the front face that's going to be meeting up with these two joints here, with these two styles, excuse me. So what you do then is you size up how much, uh, what the space is on either side that you're going to be removing. And that's what I've done. So I've taken my marking gauge and I've made a, a mark right there on the end on either side. Can you see it? And that's what I'm going to be removing, but just off of a quarter inch or so. You'll see why in a second. But it'll be removed the same amount on both pieces. This is the top, uh, this is the bottom rail and this is the top rail. So I end up looking like that. Now. Uh, there's a lot of other measuring we're going to have to do along the way, and I'll show you and explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. But uh, once you get all your pieces, particularly these have to be as, as tall as, or as close to fitting exactly perfectly as possible because you're going to have to remove some later. So if there's already gaps now, it's going to maybe make the fit look worse. So you want to have stuff to remove. And then again, this is the critical surface is the front of these. So you want this to be as accurate as possible so that way it doesn't cause a gap on the sides by making it too small. You want to be able to have it fit very, very tight so you can remove to get the fit perfect. All right, so let's get started and I'll explain what's going on. I've gone ahead and marked everything exactly where it's going to be. So this is door three, which is three from my left. I always seem to go from the left. So three, this is the, uh, the right of center door, just to make sure I got it. This is the upside of that and that's the back of the face. And that's my reference mark. So I've got all my abbreviations and markings to let me know. That way I cannot mess this up. So it's gonna go there. Same thing here. This is three, right of center door, up bottom piece, back of the bottom. So there's that. Here's my different rails. I've got similar markings on those. And what I actually like to do for this is now that I've got it in place, it's gonna go like that. I need to cut a rabbit in all of these because I'm gonna put glass in the doors. If you're gonna put glass in your doors, you can make it just simple frame and panel and then glue the glass in, but if it ever breaks, you're gonna have to cut away material to put in a new panel, a new glass pane. So I've actually, I'm gonna go with plexiglass because maybe someday I'll put real glass in, but as long as I have little kids, I'm going plexiglass or acrylic. So what I'm actually gonna do then is rather than make a, a groove to make right down the middle here for like frame and panel style, uh, I'm actually gonna make a rabbit on and remove this whole side right there. So what I've done is I'm gonna mark that and that with my pen, with my wax pen there, or pencil, I've marked that corner there and there, and that lets me know that is gonna get the rabbit on those sides. Same thing here, I'm gonna mark it, just because I'm a, I'm a little bit of, well, I'm a newbie, I'm not a professional here. Well, I'm not a professional, so I don't know what else other people do, but I'm gonna mark all these edges, the ones that are gonna accept the rabbit. And they're, gonna be, they're gonna be the inside down ones. All right, and then what I like to do is I just go and make sure I've got all of my lines 
on the correct face. Now we're going to run a rabbit in every single one of these. Before we do that, we're going to measure in from our front face on each piece how much we're going to keep. So I want the, everything on this is set back a quarter inch from the freight from the front face of something. So I've got this set a little bit proud of a quarter inch. It's like five sixteenths, actually a little. It's a shy of five sixteenths maybe. And I'm just going to run it down the front face. And then also I'm going to run it down the either end as well, about a half inch. Goodness, do you see the figure on that? That's not going to be fun to, to cut a rabbit on, I'll tell you that. And, and all the time I'm checking all along the way, so what I'm going to do is bring these pieces together and line up the front face to see how the rabbits actually fit, the lines. Can you see that the, the marking gauge line's lining up perfectly there, so that's good. It lines up at all sides, and so I've done it correctly. Now, now I'm going to take my rabbiting plane and we're going to remove the material that on the heavy side of the marking gauge line. Particularly on this piece though, I'm going to make sure I run a knife a lot deeper because I want, I want this to have as little tear out as possible. One thing I forgot to do is before I continue on with the rabbit, I'm actually going to mark the depth as well. Uh, don't rely, I don't rely only on the the depth stop. I keep an eye out for my marks as well and this helps keep everything clean but also if you're seeing your lines as you're planing and maybe you're, you, actually, you accidentally moved your depth stop then this will hopefully help that. You won't go too too far. So I'm just coming in a quarter inch from the, from the face and then going down a half inch on all my faces. Now this one's coming off the top is what it's going to be, or the inside face, excuse me. Using the same gauge that I just marked depth with, depth with I'm going to come over here and double check my depth. My depth stop is good. I've got a good sharp blade in here. I've got my fence set over so the edge of the iron is protruding a little bit over is on the line or just over, just near the line. But now it's just a matter of taking nice, uh, nice controlled passes. And uh, as many people have pointed out before, uh, you got to start at the back. You got to start at the one end of the board. So I've got this set for a really nice cut. I got this set for a really light cut on a freshly sharpened iron. There we go, that's good. The grain was giving me such fits, I went ahead with my rip saw and used the the rabbit that has already been established to just cut down to the line with the rip saw. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, it feels like it's tearing out much easier, which is good. Not tearing out, but it's coming out much easier, which is good. Goodness, that seemed to take forever, but I am happy with the results. I've got a nice rabbit there. Look at the green, and it turned out nicely. Almost no tear out. Man, I'm out of breath. That was, that was a chore. And believe me, I don't mind work, but that was annoying. So, more pieces, and repeat. Now I took this down almost to the line, it's at the line at the back, but at the front it's close. I increased the depth of cut on this, so now I backed it off because when you increase the depth of cut, 
you're actually moving down the total length it's going to cut. So your depth stop doesn't engage until later now or deeper. So I move back and now you can see I've actually hit the depth stop. So I'm going to adjust it a little bit deeper until it hits my lines perfectly. basically it. Awesome. All right, so we got our grooves. As you can see, we've got grooves everywhere rabbits uh, but the next step depends on us understanding what's going to happen here so we have this rabbit on all sides right especially on these vertical ones these styles and we're gonna we want this piece to die or to be mortised in to that piece and it's gonna go as far as that line but what happens is if we try and just make a regular mortise what's gonna happen it's gonna come up against that it's gonna have that gap right so what we have to do is relieve this on the top, on the top layer there, so the rest of it, the bottom, that part there, can go against that, can go against the gap. However, if that goes like that, you can see there's actually a little bit of distance, and that's because we're gonna have a tenon that sticks out in the middle here. So if we divide into thirds, top third, middle third, bottom third, the middle third will be a tenon that sticks out about a half inch farther to lock into the actual style itself rather than just rely, basically relying on that and glue, which could probably work well, I guess, but we want a little bit more of a mechanical joint, something that's a lot stronger. So what we're going to do then is we're going to saw away on all of the rails, four sides there, uh, one, this top piece there, and it's only got to be the thickness of the rabbit that we left. So we cut this rabbit here, so we left this lip. So we gotta cut away that lip, essentially. So we're gonna take our same gauge that we used at the very beginning to mark this. See that groove there? I'm gonna use this piece here. It's a little more forgiving. So we cut the groove, we marked it like that. Now we're just gonna mark it on the end grain as well. And we're gonna mark it down to that, we're gonna mark it down to our line we made. So we made a line on three sides, marked it on the top and on each side. Now there is the line we just made, let me darken it in for you. See how it just continues that line right there that we cut away and it's going to continue on around the, about, around the back side and stop right at that line there. So we're gonna cut this away. We're gonna do that first, because I like to do things step by step. I don't wanna just cut all one end first and have a whole bunch of different saws going everywhere. So I wanna get, I want to get out my rip saw first, cut away this line right here, then I wanna cut it off, and then we'll move to the next step. So we're gonna mark this piece that's coming off on all uh, our four areas first. And then that'll allow us to sit right in like that. Well, most of the way, we still have to have more. And that'll allow us to sit flush partially. So again, we're marking the same depth as the rabbit on, and we're continuing it around the end grain. Not excited to chisel through that knot. All right, like I said, we're going to take a saw. 
and just cut this away. We're gonna stay on the, this side of the line, which is the waist side, because this will be a tenon that goes into our style it, and we'll get, it'll get mortised in. So this middle third here will be a tenon. So I got all four of these rip cuts made and like I said I like to do all of the same process at once so I don't confuse myself and I have a whole lot of junk going around the, the, the bench here. Now I'm going to just do the cross cut to, to remove that waste. Now one thing we got to keep in mind about this particular cut is that this is the most important cut on the whole piece because this right here will meet up with that. And if this is all messed up, your joint's gonna look messed up or it's just gonna fit badly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, of course, relieve the cut, but I'm gonna saw away from the line and then chisel the rest to the line. Uh, it's something that Matt Esley says he's done, he does like 100% of the time. And so I'm actually gonna do that too because I've been doing it lately a lot more and now I think it's just amazing, so. So I'm just going to deepen the my working gauge line. Make my little trench. The reason why I'm doing the trench is not this time it's not for my saw. It's actually for my chisel later whenever I'm uh after, whenever I actually saw this piece off. So like I said, I'm doing all the same process at once. I'm marking and removing waste right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this away and I, I have a little like one millimeter trench here. Can you see it? Let me point it out with my knife here. Can you see it right there, that trench? It's wiggling around in there. I'm going to cut just on the edge of that trench and then that'll leave me half a millimeter maybe, I don't know, of wiggle room here and uh, then it'll be easier, it'll be easy, it'll be easy to reference my chisel off of whenever I go ahead and remove that waste. got really close too close in a way now we have a bunch of pieces that we have two pieces that look like this and you can see what I'm talking about now it'll reference right in there like that and hopefully yeah this is a little proud my style is a little proud which is good because I can just remove waste off the tenon here to make it even same thing here now we're going to chisel to our lines there because our next process after this depends on it. So we're going to chisel away and what I like to do is just take my chisel, drop it in the line here, put it in the line like that and 
put two fingers in the front and my thumb on the back and then got two fingers curled up underneath. And I just eyeball it. There we go. And then we're not, we're gonna go about half the chisel on this one only. Half of it's rest, referencing off the previous cut and then half is actually cutting away. Eyeballing vertical. Okay, look how clean that is so far. Now this is unsupported in the back. We can't chisel that away yet. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get this piece of scrap right here, which is from something else I've been working on. Well, which is from the same project. And just uh, support it. And continue on. There we go. No tear out, easy. Moving on to the other side. Great. All right, there's one piece, I'll do it for the other. After you chisel away the waist and clean up the whole shoulder of the tendon there, it should be nice and square, referencing off your main reference face there. Don't think I could be happy with that. Perfect. So that's great. And this one's also going to be squared up in a second. So that means we should have a really nice mating face on there where it comes together. Now's a good time to clean up your tendons as well. And all you're going to do is you're going to keep trimming them down with the chisel until you come to your lines. And then whenever you put them in place, this is the top, this is the top right here. Whenever you put them in place, they should line up and be flush. This one, I cut a little bit too much. It's not a problem though. This one, however, I cut just right. And when you do that, basically no difference at all. Really nice. Now we've got to actually form our back relief cut here, which will then leave us with a tenon. And we're gonna figure out the width of that by using our, our chisel for the mortise. It'll be a one quarter inch mortise. So I'm just gonna take this I'm gonna use one of these little off cuts here. I'm gonna just set it on the tenon. I'm gonna line the chisel up on that and then just hammer down. Now I'm gonna take a gauge and set it to the outside edge of that mark and score across. See what I'm talking about there? This is the width of my chisel there. And then I put the gauge line to the edge of the chisel right there. And the reason why we do that is because if this is going to be our tenon, we don't want an arbitrary size. We want it to be the size of one of our chisels. So since this is already ready to go, I'm going to put this on there and use that as a reference. And now we have the tenon width right there. Now we have to figure out the tenon depth. And this is the part where you can go vastly awry. Before I do anything though, I'm going to mark the tenon depth on the other side using the same method. And it's okay to reset the gauge because it's likely not going to be the exact same thing. In my case, it's not. And once you establish your line, you can just sink it back in the line to find it again anyways. So now the depth. Again, so if this is going to go here, we have that gap that needs to, um, that will get, that will get closed once it's mortised in. So we're going to leave this long in the middle and this will get cut back. So how do we figure out that distance? One way you could do it is just by butting them up against each other. You want the two pieces to go with each other, all right? So this is my top, and this is my top left, and then you can put calipers in the middle of that gap, and then just trans, and then measure down from the top of that tenon there, and we're gonna do it on the back there. So that's one way to do it, get the gap, and mark it on the back. So you're gonna measure there and then put it on the back. But I don't have calipers, do you? I don't know. Now at least I could make one, I guess. The other really thing, simple thing to do is, we're just, remember that these are gonna get butted up against each other. And so just do that. So rest the edges on each other, then very carefully, mark the depth right here. So the depth in, 
just scribe it over. And then we're going to take that, set a gauge to it, and mark around. So I'm going to dart, I'm going to deepen that line just a tiny little bit with my knife. It's right there. I'm going to set a gauge to it just by sinking it in the little kerf or the little line, the little groove it made. And again, it's going to be the back, so go around, around, and around there. All right, so that is the depth. We're going to cut away this piece right here. I'm going to do the same on the other side now. Here's a view from the front, just sitting right on there. You would hope that they're exactly the same, but so many times they're not. So we have the depth marked on both sides. Now I'm going to go back and trans and reset the gauge in that top line. right there, and then just bring it up from the side. And then we could have just, from the beginning, taken that line quite a, quite a bit down, except for the fact that I'm afraid that I would cut past the line that I want to. So this is what it looks like now. Let me darken that in for you. Pretty close. And we're just going to remove that once I mark the other side. All right. Now we're going to saw away that tenon, saw away that cheek of the tenon there, and we'll be ready, we'll be in business. And now we can remove it, chiseling us, sawing and then chiseling it away. Make my little trench here. We check to see if our um, if our if our measurements were good. As we take, for example, this is my top piece, the left, and we're going to actually we're going to butt these pieces up against each other as if they were to, and then just look down it. And you see, those should come pretty close. There's tiny little bit of overlap. Yeah, that's good. The other way is you could instead of doing it this way, you could flip this piece over and then just hook it on the bottom there like that and then side down it like over top of it and see how much of a gap there is. That's a little bit more relative because depending on your angle, there's no gap and there is a huge gap. So, but there's different ways and I think we're pretty close, which is what matters. But before I actually remove any of this material, I'm gonna form the tenon, the final tenon first. And that's really easy. We're going to take the original gauge that we marked the depth of the rabbit with and just set it at a half inch. It's already set at a half inch. I'm going to mark in a half inch from either side. And then just using a dovetail saw, saw down to this back high piece there. And I'm actually just going to make sure I go below my line on the back but not marring the front of the surface there. And take any half inch, we're gonna, just like this, we're gonna mark from the, over the top on both sides. 
and just saw it away. This doesn't have to be terribly precise. That is the final piece with a little bit of cleaning up to do. But yeah. All right, so now that we've got our pieces ready to go, we're gonna cut our mortises. And this is really, really simple. We're gonna take our gauge that's set to half an inch. We're gonna mark a half an inch in from the styles on all ends. This one and this one. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the gauge and we're gonna set it to the end of the tenon. Any tenon will do, really. They're all pretty close and we can just fit, make each one to fit. And then go the same process. Now you'll have two marks on every end, on every end of every style. So each style will look like that, you see? There are two marks, one there and one there. Those roughly correspond to the size of your mortises. And this, like I said, since we're trying to do everything in patterns, it's really not a big deal. Uh, you can size them up perfectly if you like, uh, but you can also just do this, do this method as well. So taking your quarter inch chisel, you're gonna to wanna to be very careful not to pry too much against it. You're just gonna rest it up against the rabbit on the mark right there and just go to town. Gotta re-secure this piece. There it is. All right, so I just finished cutting one of the joints and it's gonna go in really tight. The other one I got pretty loose, unfortunately, because I, I shaved the tenon too much, but looks like it's gonna be okay. See how it's not closing on the front? That is actually a problem in the back, which is good. So I'm gonna remove that material now and hopefully it'll close up nice. All right, so after removing the material from the back, it closed up really nicely on the front, perfectly in fact. And uh, there's a tiny little bit, there's a, well, there's a gap on the back, which isn't a huge deal for me because this one I had sort of wandered a little bit on my cut. So I'm gonna be fine with that. It's not the worst thing ever, so I'm gonna leave it. But the most important thing, like I said, is that the front is nice. It's actually a little bit proud, but I think I'm gonna leave it go because I can always just stand, I can always plane that down. The most important thing is that it's, straight across the top. If there's any sort of one way or the other, it's gonna rack the door and then you're not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna close right, so. This joint right. is the one that gave me the most trouble. It had all that nasty grain on it, but it came together the nicest, regardless of the, the chipping out there. 
came together quite well on, on all sides in the front and it just is seated perfectly. This is honestly, I don't know if I need glue on this one. It went in really difficult. But looking down at it, it's pretty straight. It's close. I might need to tweak it a little bit, which will unfortunately affect the fit. But yeah, no, it's just glue up. I'm going to fiddle with it, glue it, and then glue it up and make sure it's all, uh, it's not, uh, it's not distorted or anything. All right, so I've got the, the door more or less the way I want it. It's more or less, it's pretty close to flush on all edges here. Now what I'm going to do is take winding sticks. These are my winding sticks, if you haven't seen them before. And I'm not going to set them over the rail here because there might be, it might be up or down or something. I don't know. So I'm going to set it just in front of the rail here. And the same thing over here. And I actually have these F marked for the front and they're marked relatively in the middle. So I'm going to put the F off to the side. So that way I have the exact same. Like because I planed the boards together. So I'm going to just look over them. I see that the way it's sitting currently means that it's a little skewed. The back corner there is lifted up. So uh, what I'll do is I'll put these in calls to make it uh, to make it all hold together flat, and I think it'll be fine. But other than that, it's pulled together nicely. It's maybe an eighth inch out, which is huge on a small door like this. But I think I can just pull it together because. Two of the joints are a little bit sloppy, so it'll be fine. All right, so it's out of clamps. It's a couple hours later, and I'm gonna do a quick test fit, but I can tell you that I know vertically it's fine. I mean, it's really not over but I'm pretty sure horizontally it's going to need a little bit of adjusting. If I just line it up right here, it just barely goes in on the bottom, which is great, but on the top, just the tiniest little bit difficult to get in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove probably two plain shavings with my with a light pass on this one and two on this one on the inside face. And then what I'll do is I'll bevel this back side of it so they can close. And that's it. If I lay a square across the face, you can see how it's flat for the first part and then angled on the back. And that's just to allow it to close easier. I'm going to do the same thing to the other door. All right, let's see how they fit. The left side door, this one's very tight vertically. door here much looser oh no it snugs up vertically wow look at that <laughs> perfect that is really something let me swing it out just a little let it pivot out a little bit so you get an idea yeah, so it's catching at the top oh yeah they'll be fine now I'm gonna add the hinges and everything of course but everything seems to be quite nice nothing too skewed this one's a little bit at the bottom out, but I think it's okay. Well, there it is. That's, uh, that's all four doors. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it's been helpful. I hope it's been enjoyable. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm really excited to see the progress. I just cannot believe I've got all the doors in place at this point. I just have to add the hinges on these two and then the plexiglass and that's it. And then from here, 
it's just the drawers themselves. I've got the drawer, I've got the drawer fronts in place, which is just makes it look amazing. But yeah, this is basically what the things, what it's going to look like at this point. Anyways, again, thanks for watching, and see you around for the next one.